Hello and welcome to another episode of the Chrissy Mayer Podcast. We are on iTunes, YouTube, Spotify, and SoundCloud. And if you're listening to us on iTunes right now, go ahead and leave us a five-star review. I read the best reviews every week, so long as they are five stars. Mm. Quick shout out to our sponsor, Cushy Dreams. They are my go-to for CBD products. If you're fe- feeling a little bit anxious, if you're feeling a little bit like uh, this last year has given you crazy anxiety and you want a natural solution, I highly suggest their products. Uh, you can join the men and women who are sick of their vapes and gummies and want to smoke their CBD. You can get all the benefits of CBD without getting high. These products have under 0.3% THC in them. Uh, They offer different indica sativa blends like dream, create, hustle, energy, really whatever you want to do with your day, they have your back. If you want to be a little bit more upbeat, they've got a strain for that. If you want to be a little bit more calm, a couple puffs before bed, they got you on that front. Wait, so I usually take the edge off with a couple shots. You're telling me I could just literally take some vaporized CBD and I could have the same edge taken off. You literally could just like light up a joint. I love the joints because I'm not like. It's like I actual flower. I don't, yeah, I don't have, it's actual flower. It's like high quality CBD bud. It comes like wow. in, in a tin, like vacuum seals. They're obsessed with quality. Or you can get these like hand rolled joints that you just like, I like light them up. I have like a couple pulls and my mind and body feel calm. Like kind of within like five to 10 minutes. I'm in. <laughs> good we're in texas i don't good. know if that's legal here but i, mean, I think it is it's, it is it is it's legal in all 50 states okay. it ships well, right to for, you for it ships one. straight to your damn house um go to cushydreams.com k-u-s-h-y nice. dreams.com and use promo code cmp at checkout you're gonna get 20 percent off they're obsessed with compliance and purity you can go to their lab results on their website and see everything you need to see extraordinary smokable flower Hustle, create, peace, dream. I really like the hustle blend because it doesn't get me too sleepy. But if you're somebody who's like, I'm anxious as F and need to calm down before bed, I highly recommend their products. Cushydreams.com, boys and girls. You're going to love it. All right. I'm so excited to have this guy in the podcast. Um, now, let's, do, let's start the, the podcast by right, Namaste. All right. I don't know if this is even like culturally appropriating. Let's let's appropriate let's do some it. cultures. Let's do it. Namaste. Namaste, Namaste soulless redhead. Namaste. Oh, wow. Wow. May that's, God grant you a soul. That's coming a lot for someone who is borderline ginger himself. You know, but borderline is different because, you know, what's interesting is, is people say, oh, you're bo-, like, I have a borderline obnoxious voice. And I always tell people, at least it's borderline. So right. At least I have an excuse. At least it's not fully there. Yeah, and it's like it's like you know the thing is is like I'm from LA, right? And so everyone there is basically like a little bit queer sounding. We speak in upspeak. <laughs> We're like professional Valley girls, right? But we also have learned to live with needles and pee and poop on the ground and just like human feces has like become like the aroma of my generation. And so it's like when we walk around and we're there, it's like, you think that a, being a ginger is what's going to offend me? <laughs> it's like, I, yeah. had a, I had a dodge, I had a dodge a homeless encampment on fire to get to church. Do you know what kind of like self denial you have to do to think I got to go into an air conditioned building with other Christians, probably mostly Caucasian while avoiding the fact that poor people on the street are burning their own houses down with meth with meth labs, like that kind of like weird mind trickery makes me say, I'm not susceptible to your stupid women foolery. Yeah. You can't use your witchcraft on me, you witch. He is the host of Slightly (laughs) Offensive on Blaze TV. Uh, Welcome to the show, Elijah Schaefer. Thank you so much for coming on. Oh, so many Uh, people. Oh my goodness, welcome to the stage. Can I ask you a question? How this early in your career have you gotten such a big audience? Like really, like realistically, the amount of people here, like everyone just, how how have uh-huh. you got this many people to be able to like just tell me the, your secrets you know this is like a live studio audience aka we are in your house right now you have <laughs> been gracious enough to let me um sleep over your place while i'm in town to be wait clarify because people know i'm married in your own room in my own room like this that? is not a thruple situation this is not wait, an get orgy the, get scenario the wink, get the wink in just there, like, there's very much another wall and a separate <laughs> bed um, we're not Mormon. We're not secret Mormons. No, no, I am. no. And, uh, so this is, I think your third appearance, uh, appearance, appearance is on it? the Have podcast. Twice? 
you did you did an episode um really early on you might have been in the 20s like very early on and then wow. we did and then the last time we actually spoke was before january 6th we did like a pre-jan 6 yeah preview episode with like bryson gray and tina forte oh my gosh i've been on twice yeah, yeah. bizarre weird and so much has happened and since january then. 6 is such a weird day yeah i'm surprised to be on the show once again obviously recording not in my house <laughs> Um, can we so, cheers to that? Can we please? Yeah, look so at these. Let's, let's be a little LA. Incredibly, you made these incredibly gay cocktails. Thank you so well, much. Let's be fair. This was for you and my wife. And then Which when I drank it, yeah. if you drink a, a drink out of a glass like this, if you didn't like guys, 10%, you might like them a little bit. <laughs> it's like, it's like, <laughs> mm. Mm. actually, maybe Kevin Spacey isn't a perfect. <laughs> actually, <laughs> mm, maybe I like the, the taste of dick. Mm. Oh, shit. Well, I always have. Um, Elijah, so much has happened yes. since January 6th. Um, since we last spoke on this podcast, you've been embroiled in a little bit of a um, legal drama. I mean, you were – I was at January 6th at the Capitol building. You were there. So many of our, like, friends and colleagues were there. Um, but you got involved in a little bit of – drama because you went inside the building and then people tried to give you shit for it, tried to get you arrested, canceled, uh, referred to the FBI for it. You were embroiled mm -hmm. in a little bit of drama. Some might say, so I'm going to tell you this. So I know a lot of you guys think, oh, drama, like my friend had sex with my wife and that kind of drama. And that is a little bit of drama and, and things, bad things do happen in the world. But to be honest, it's like, if you end up going with a horde of people who who are under the impression the election has been stolen, which it may, borrowed. Or may not we're have not been. We're not going to say that. We're going to say know. we're going to say it was borrowed slash fortified. Yeah, they took it. They took it and they 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 brought some factors in and then made it happen. So we're there, okay? They made it happen. They didn't need to steal the votes. They didn't need to steal the votes. They had every, they had every institution of power with them to fortify the election. And when you're with a horde of people. And you're also uh, working for a company and you go out and you uh, walk into the Capitol building and happen to end up, by the way, I'm going to tell you this, the federal police gassed us into submission. So speaking of being gassed, have you ever, have you ever been hot boxed speaking to women? Uh, yeah. Been, I mean, I've been with men. They farted in the car. A Dutch oven? I then farted in the car that I've been in. I was not able to leave right away. I got Dutch oven by the Capitol police. <laughs> <laughs> the Dutch oven me with, with what we call it spicy boys, which is okay. uh, heavily concentrated capsicum based gas. That sounds essentially, intense. That uh, makes you want to throw up and it violently hurts your organs when you're in it for more than like 30 seconds at a time. Jesus. And it makes you, your, your lungs constrict. It's an interesting gas, but uh, it's also called post Chipotle syndrome. So you go in and like, and you go in there and I ended up in uh, Nancy Pelosi staffers offices and I ended up sick, so I ended up sitting down in a chair because I ended up very sick from the gas. And I just noticed that the computer screens were still on, which meant that the private information of the utmost high-level security of our Congress people was susceptible to access. And realistically speaking, when I sat down there, think about this, like just put this in your head. Mm -hmm. You are at a alleged riot – you are in a federal building. You are in what you don't know might be Nancy Pelosi's office, somebody's office. Who knows? Yeah. Don't ask me. Ask the FBI. They probably know more about me than I know about myself. And you're sick from the gas. You feel like you're going to throw up. Would never throw up in the Capitol building. God forbid that would ever happen. But Never. But. You have to wait till you're <laughs> outside again. Yeah. Definitely never did that. But then you go in. You're sitting there. And you just notice that like, hey. The difference between national security and not national security is like one little journal boy gun inside and like taking a picture. So I made a apparently a grave mistake, which I don't regret, but it apparently was. Was I decided I took a picture of government computers and I posted it on public forums to millions of people. Okay. Who knew that was controversial? I would never have known that. Like, I'd be like, isn't the Capitol building a public building? Isn't it a tax funded building? Isn't it, weren't there people what? in there like 2018 protesting Kavanaugh with the pussy hats on? And Nancy Pelosi was like, you're participating in democracy. Yet when you do it in 2021 uh, and you're a conservative or a patriot, now you're an insurrectionist. Yeah. So, like, 
let's just say, <laughs> so what people might not know is that there's like a few different security clearances for reporters. So it's kind of like, for instance, you have a, you have a boyfriend, right? I do. Okay. So you have a boyfriend. You also, have, you also have, you know, interactions with minors that are minors men, that are men talk to them. So just because you might take off your shirt and show the floppity flippities to your boyfriend. Okay. Yes. Just because he's a man doesn't give you the right to do that to somebody that would be underage. That'd be called that's, that's the statutory rape. Or right. Sexual harassment. No, I would never. So it's like, so the, it's a false equivalency of saying like, well, if I can show this to my boyfriend, then I can show this to any man wrong. There's a big difference between your boyfriend and consent. And then somebody else. I can't believe you said floppity flippities instead of tits. Oh, this is for adults. This program. This is an adult program. I didn't know. But what I was going to say is like, it's like basically what happened is, is that I have a show, which is my podcast, which is my flippity floppities that I show <laughs> to the world. And then I have, I have my reporting, which is for a news agency, which is to report. And the media decided that because I have a show that invalidated my credentials as a reporter and they sort of made it seem like I was a YouTuber like Vosh or like somebody else online or like you who just happened to be in the Capitol when, when in reality I was actually a reporter. You had trying, a lanyard. Yeah. You I, had I, a laminated I had my credentials card. on my, on my chest showing that I was allowed to be reporting around the area and the media didn't like it because I work for blaze media, which they don't like. Apparently, because we mm. think about some controversial stuff, like we're like, oh, you shouldn't tell your two-year-old daughter that she can become a boy and get an artificial penis on her. And like, I know it's kind of like very controversial. And like, wow. the very, idea of like preventing yeah. two-year-olds from getting artificial penises is like a bit taboo today. In my world, that's like, you're a pervert. Maybe you should be executed. But that, <laughs> like, that's just my rule. Yeah. Like for like sexually exploiting children, you should right. die probably. Yeah. I mean, I believe in the total. Just you're done. Like, I mean, <laughs> yeah. Legally, legally, it's child abuse. It's child abuse. Literally, sexually uh, exploiting yeah. children is it's the terrible. end of the line. You should go. You should be executed for doing that. But according to the people who agree with sexual exploitation, exploitation of children and those types of things, uh, I'm in a position where they came in and said, "Oh my gosh, here's this." Chad guy who came in and just like totally documented the world and got 120 million views in like the first mm. two days of the Capitol wow. building. Let's destroy him. Let's take That's away his living. Views. Yeah. Yeah. We did like, I think we did like 1.6 billion views in like Jesus. one year. It was crazy. It was crazy. Wow. We did it. We were in the billions and they don't like that. They have millions and billions of dollars of budget. And I come out with this little, China uh, slave trade supported phone boy. And then I take pictures oh and then it wins. And also a lot of people do that very well as well, including let's say Shelby Talcott, daily color, Richie McGinnis, daily color, George Ventura, daily color, Julia Rosas town hall. Uh, we have uh, Savannah Hernandez blaze media. Now yeah. um, we also have on top of the Kaylin Dalmeda of uh, these are all people you should look up by the way, if you're a typer of scriber news and well, there's a lot more people. Brandon Getzwanger of his own thing, but these a lot of people realize that they could do a better job in the media. They just don't mm. like the fact that we're better at their job than they are. Why? What has what has um, taken place to allow average people to be better than quote serious journalists at their well, job? Well, because this is a super ultra professional podcast, which <laughs> never, which never would have anybody crazy on. I know you. I know you're very professional. Um, I think what happened is this, it's like, let me just lay it down. It's like, what makes us different is this, is that the January 6 riots were just a civil unrest. Okay. Five people apparently died. I believe it were like four to five, depending on what you'd say. They were all Trump supporters. They say that most of them died from medical emergencies. Those medical emergencies were the equivalent of being pushed off the wall by Capitol police. Most of these people were murdered by Capitol police officers, which is fine because they're white. So it doesn't count. Who cares about white people? Yeah. Let them all die. Honestly, just, let's just genocide white all the white people. people. Are they are not really a thing. They're yeah. not. They're not real people. No. No. Even I consider myself one third of a human being. Yeah. Like same. I, I'm like, why wouldn't someone write a constitution of a country where people are one third of something? Because if they would, that would be perfect, and that would be white people. Yeah. Uh, but ultimately speaking, is like, 
you know, after after witnessing the 2020 riots and what was going on there, I was talking to uh, another journalist last night who I went out, but he was saying that, you know, he gets nightmares, things happen in his life, that he still has PTSD from from what, what's happened during the riots at, during BLM. And what people don't realize is that the media psyoped the riots um, from 2020. So a good example would be Kenosha, which happened in the latter half of 2020. People might know Kenosha by Kyle Rittenhouse. And might I break your mind by saying Kyle Rittenhouse was the least important part of Kenosha. Why? Oh, sip that tea. Sip it. One more time. I sipped it. Give this him is... eye contact. Hello. This is mostly pineapple juice and vodka. Damn. Ugh. I'm a... You... Not a great drink. Not your best. Not your finest. It's because it's warm now. I guess so. Also, okay, let's just give a little comment here. So first of all, William Sonoma crystal glasses with okay, a- Okay, Elijah, you have very nice glasses. You have very nice little fucking things Hold up. to stab the thing. In my day, that was called making a drink proper. So this isn't Dave and Buster's. I don't water down <laughs> your drink with, with melted ice cubes. I actually gave you a proper drink. Wow, this I'm uncomfortable. I gotta get, baby. Got oh. my wife in here. I'm feeling oh like- Oh my God. Uh, all the right. heater's not on, and the way you're drinking that drink makes me feel like I'm back in with Capitol Police and tear gas. That was too much. <laughs> I'm trying to sweat, and my hair is losing. But no, but what I meant is like the Capitol, the, you know, when you go back to Kenosha and you go back to what was going on there, it's interesting to say that, you know, I was there recently, and I remember they, they did burn down several city blocks, and it was confirmed because I went back there, and I probably counted about 24 buildings that were burned down, Damn. which I would say 24 buildings burned down is pretty significant. That's a that's a lot more than I thought. Yeah, so it was more than a couple dozen, but what they make you remember about that night is that Kyle Rittenhouse killed some people, by the way, in self-defense. If that guy gets out of prison, I'll be surprised because the justice system, you know, the jury is now an extension of the mob. Right. The jury is just the branches of the mob now. Our justice system is fully corrupt. Uh, and I, I think they're gonna try to stick it to him, even though he, I don't think he's guilty of any of the crimes wow. they're, they're, they're sticking to him, but they made you think about Kenosha, about Kyle Rittenhouse as an intention so that you didn't question about why Kyle Rittenhouse was there and why what happened happened and why Kyle Rittenhouse was there is because for multiple nights without the intervention of the national guard to any, uh, expendable degree and without the intervention of the federal government at all, they successfully burned down a city of middle America and terrorized a place and cause severe damage, even even pulling senior citizens out of their businesses, beating them up, burning down apartment buildings while kids were inside, people putting up signs like, please don't burn my building down, there's children inside. No one knows about the leftist terrorists who did that because we're so busy debating about whether Kyle Rittenhouse is the white supremacist or not. Wow. Um, but for people that were there, not only did they have trauma, but they know that the narrative that, that pervaded wasn't true. And that's the same thing about January 6th. The narrative about January 6th just isn't true. Uh, it wasn't an insurrection. Uh, it was, It was. I would say, about 62 people attempted insurrection, Yeah. which if you're smart, there was hundreds of officers, so it's not actually an insurrection, right? Right. I mean, like, there were, like, hundreds of thousands of people. Like, there was at least 100,000 people event. in proximity right. from what I've seen. Not, not necessarily at the Capitol, but in proximity to the event. And like 62 people that they can find had this like conspiracy to take over the Capitol. Like, I'm sorry. If you're, if you're a multi-trillion dollar GDP and you run the federal government and you're afraid of 62 people, you're not a government. Like, yeah. Like I think like 12 people try to kidnap governor Whitmer, but I don't even know that that's even true, but they tried to in Michigan. Like if the point is I'll conclude with this. The government wanted January 6th to happen. They, you know, we know many orders, including from Nancy Pelosi, were shot down to have National Guard there. We know that if any serious event from 2020, there should have been at least 10,000 National Guard there. Mm. People were mad. No matter what your political ideology is, they were right. mad. It was intended. It was a honeypot. It was meant to set up the right wing. And it will be remembered in history, like Biden said, as one of the worst attacks in just the history of America. So wild. Yeah, it's in it. it, it was just wasn't. nobody just there wasn't. was armed. And well, they, a few, but I mean, like nothing. We we have to we have to be clear with facts. Like statistically significant, nobody was armed. Like a few people might have had sidearms. Nobody shot police officers. Nobody no. killed congressmen. Nobody did anything. No. It was just, it was a riot. It was people rioted at the at the Capitol, and it's not the first time that's happened. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Um. um all right. It's good. It's good to hear. So. 
knowing what you know now, what what would you have done differently, if anything? Well, I'm currently eyeing a actual legit journalist who I'm not going to say who's in my house right now. And I'm looking at them. <laughs> I'm not saying who they are. Can I say who they are? I can can we say who you are? Oh, Julio! Julio, you want to come in here with us? Yes, get in come here. On the show. Get, get in, in here. here. Get in here. Get in this pod. Yeah, come on. Get, Just get in the here. pod. This it's is basically we, we, we call Elijah's house the fucking Red Pill Hotel because give me a red pill. there's Just come in. Scoot there's in. There's constantly we have a, a, guest, a secret guest. All right, all right. Scoot in more. Scoot in more. All right, welcome to the show. Yes. So ask <laughs> Julio. So first, Julio. Before you ask Julio what he would have done differently. Ask Julio what I should have done differently. Julio, what oh, what should have Elijah done differently on January sixth? Uh, he should have brought a gas mask. Number one. Okay, true. I did. I did throw up near the Capitol. I can't say where, but happens. I've thrown up from from tear gas multiple right. times, and it could have been in the rotunda or not. It could have been. I wouldn't say I would. I just said it could. Possible. You know it's possible. Te- tear gas can make you vomit. Oh yeah, it's. I've heard It'll that. literally make you vomit. It's, ter- it's a terrible. You never get used to it. What did you have a gas mask? Yeah, yeah, remember? So you were in there too. I mean, your yeah. audience doesn't remember, and this audience has no idea. This is we've a, never this met is, you. This is an audience of what's the media company? My, I'm I'm by myself on this. Well, one. this is a YouTube channel, so this yeah. is like an actual. They don't know you, so you work for you work. You're a journalist. You work for a real agency. You're credentialed federally. Yeah. You brought a gas mask. Can I ask you? I'm gonna ask him a question. So I didn't bring a gas mask because. I thought that Trump supporters wouldn't start a riot. That's a real thing. I didn't yeah. think they would because I had never seen them do it before. Why did you bring one? Because uh, I the the past two marches in November and December, uh, it was mainly concerned with with pepper spray that would be used in fights between like the Proud Boys and Antifa at night. Because um, if you remember the the past two marches. Or peaceful during the day. You yeah. want the 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 stop the steal? The stop the steal march. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They were, they were peaceful during the day. Yeah. And then they they and then the Proud Boys and other Trump supporters would try to go out and find Antifa mm-hmm. um, to fight at night. And so, um, the, and and we're not talking like little pepper spray. We're talking like bear mace. Yeah. Like, 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 like people the, don't know. Tell them, you have to tell the audience bear. what's bear mace. It, honestly, it, it, it's it's pepper spray on steroids. It's meant for. Bears meant for bears. To, to do you mean gay men who are hairy? Well, I mean actual or actual bears. Hey, you might need a little big deterrent for those boys. <laughs> bear but mates. and so, uh, I I always bring all my gear like a ballistic vest, a helmet, and gas mask uh, when there's ever a potential situation where I might need it, and especially because uh, I'm not gonna have enough time to go home, grab it, and then come back because uh, I might miss something, and so. I did not anticipate at all for I, to for a riot to start at the Capitol. I was just I just had it on me because I was expecting again more stuff to happen hmm. at night. And like, because what was weird to me though is like, I remember when I saw Trump supporters start to attack people, which I, people said yep. they were Antifa. I don't, I think this is a debunked claim. I don't no. think they were Antifa at all. I, I, there's no signs well, 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 one, one of the one of the main ways you can kind of tell that there weren't Antifa because look Antifa is not great at a lot of stuff there's a reason why they're part of that uh, but they're really great at hiding their identity that's why mm-hmm. that's what makes it so hard to identify them later even if you get them on the video and so yeah we were told oh look out they'll be Antifa dressed as Trump mm-hmm. supporters they'll be wearing MAGA hats they'll be in camouflage a, a lot of the people there they didn't make any attempts to obscure their face you know they they weren't wearing masks or anything so you know they've been able to identify them later on and find out that oh yeah they're actually Trump supporters and then of course you have the actual people who were using their personal social media to say, hey, we're in the Capitol or we're at the Capitol or whatever. And so, I mean, you can kind of tell that. Uh, and now, of course, there is that one confirmed case of a BLM activist, John Sullivan, right, being a part of that whole thing and actually encouraging uh, that. But, I mean, there were just so many people at the Capitol, not everybody, but there were so many people at the Capitol building that were engaging in rioting behavior that it's hard to believe that every single one of them was secret. Right. Like, that's what I told people. They, they asked me why... I never agreed that they were all Antifa. And like, I know that's, that's the partisan hackery of like, oh, well you should agree. Cause like, obviously you're like more of a traditional journalist 
and I report, but I also have a show and people, you know, put pressure like, well, you're a right wing guy. You should agree with us. And they go, well, look, man, I looked at the social media profiles of the people arrested. I looked at their backgrounds, I looked at their voting records, and I couldn't find connections to Antifa. And unfortunately, like I, I think, you know, Brandon Strzok, who's the founder of the walkway movement, who's currently yeah. under federal indictment, kind of said on a live stream, like, oh, I thought this is what we wanted. I thought that that we were, that's is what was going on, like that we were supposed to storm this, whatever he said. He was saying like, I thought we were angry. And that's my point is like, hmm. so you're telling me on one hand that these people believe their ele- the election was fortified, stolen, taken from them. Borrowed. But also- they couldn't. That couldn't be enough instigator to be angry enough to storm the Capitol. Yeah, it could. Like if you thought your country is being taken from you, yes, you would storm the Capitol. Doesn't mean everyone there was violent. Anyone yeah. wanted bad things to happen. I think most. I think. I think this. This narrative that all the the Capitol people were like these horrible people. I mean, you were oh, there. Yeah. There were a couple of very violent people up front that were oh, like yeah. really violent. But the people behind, if you didn't see it. They just walk like kind of toward the capital. It, it was it was it was weird because uh, you had people that wanted to fight the cops that like wanted to do harm. Uh, like the rotunda when I was in, was when I was in there was a great example because like you had people on the like the hallways trying to get further in and you know trying to like fight the cops there and then there was other people in the rotunda that were like looking around. You know, mm. they, they weren't being like that shot of the grandma, the old woman that was like, How uh, did she get R- in R- here? R- Richie McGinnis got video of like two guys just smoking weed in the rotunda. And so it's like, Yeah, those people smoking weed in the rotunda. Who smoked weed in the Capitol? Yeah, it, I'm not trying to say, I'm not trying to say that's good or bad. But like, what dollar. an epic thing to win! Yeah. People like poking up a pipe, just like Why not in the White House, looking at Andrew dreams. Jackson or something yeah. like that, in a statue, be like. Yo, some good kush, bro. So, so, but that's to the point where, like, even some of the people that were inside, like, yeah, there were clearly rioters, but then there was also people who who weren't, and it was, it was, it was a weird, it was a, it was a bad day, but it was there was also some like weird aspects related to that. What weird aspects? We have time. Oh, we have time, hey, Julio. Well, no, we have time. It's 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 just like the weird, like the di- the dichotomy of like the two types of people that that were in, or three types if you want to include the, the journalists that were in there. Um, and you guys are journalists. <laughs> there I'm a reporter. reporter. He's a journalist. Okay. I don't know Different. what the difference is. but I okay. film shit. He's – this is his job. He deduces. Yeah. He, he, yeah. he makes informed, non-biased conclusions about what's going on. I just present information. Okay. Okay. But so uh, – Realistically. It, I mean, it, I'm giving you credit. I don't want, I don't want someone to pull us in the same category for your own reputation. <laughs> <laughs> if you could pull in my reputation, it's not good. So, so what has happened to both of you after post January six? How did things change for both of you? What was the kind of aftermath of being sort of involved slash seen in the Capitol building? Well, I could say so. I was kind of concerned about the FBI knocking out on my door uh, because. Well, one, there there were some people like even even the day of when I was when, like I, I tweeted that I was gonna be on Tucker Carlson. There were some people like, oh, you should be arrested because you're inside the Capitol. It's like, well, I have, I literally have Capitol Hill press credentials. Number one, uh, and number two, I'm not rioting. Like, I mean, like the law enforcement can see like all of my work that I did the past year. Though, so like, you know, I have a pattern. You don't own cargo shorts. You're not. You don't wear. <laughs> oh, I own cargo shorts. <laughs> oh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's <laughs> anyway, but no, so, uh, so I was concerned that, you know, maybe the FBI, but they, they, they never, it, so they, they know I was in there because they actually used one of my videos to indict or to charge, uh, Clark Keller, who was a former Olympic swimmer and gold medal in the same years that Michael Phelps won a gold medal. And so he was inside the Capitol building and apparently I was the only one that got footage of him being inside, uh, in, in the rotunda and they could tell it was him because he wore his Olympic swimming jacket. Which oh was, man, why would you again, do that? Again, people didn't make any attempts to hide their identity. Um, mm. so I don't think they, they realized what they were a part of. Like, I, I think, right, and, and like even in the video that like you could see of him, he wasn't like actively fighting the cops. Like you could see people were, but like he wasn't a part of that. So again, it, it, it's there, weird, there's, so. there's two phases. There's two phases, which is why I even say of that, like with, with when people came after you is like, I think people like with watching how they walked through the like the rotunda within the boundaries of the guided bars that kept people in like the, the yeah. crowd control. I admit the two stories are true at the same time. 
that like there were some people who wanted to do some harm that were mad. And I would say the majority of people, that's not what they wanted to do. And so that's when we talk about like the difference between BLM is like, I've been at riots with BLM. We're talking about thousands of people looting and rioting and hanging out and doing things for that's the majority are rioting. Yeah. And, and the minority are just like, Hey, stop yeah. that. This, I would say the minority were rioting. The majority were like confused what was going on. It was a front yeah. line. It was a lot of like, it was a lot of these groups that were pissed in the front. If you were back 40 feet, you didn't know that was happening. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. It, I mean, it was it was a bad day. I mean, I'm not. Did gonna... you climb any rafters? I was. I climbed. <laughs> I climbed. I climbed yeah, no, I didn't, I didn't climb. I didn't climb any rafters. But no, I mean, it was it was it was just it was it was a messed up day. And like, I, I there there was a there was a point where you know people were like still shoving in when the cops were shoving us out, and so like we couldn't move and all that. So I mean, it was it was it was messed up. I'm, I'm against. Did, they, did did anything happen to you with the feds? No, 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 but so to go back to my story, so like they, 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 with Clack Keller, they, they used, they, they, they said in the, in the charging sheet that like, you know, Julio wrote us from Town Hall Media. So they know I was in there and they just haven't done anything. So, I, I, and that's because like, again, like I'm credentialed through uh, the House Press Gallery and like they can easily look me up and see that like, okay, he does have a history of just documenting riots. But what do people say to say that you didn't go through security? Cause I know even, even Nancy Pelosi sometimes has avoided security as well. So I know that on that argument about, you know, the idea of going through and, and avoiding things like, I know they try to push that on people, but what do you say about the fact that you went in? I mean, I, I mean, the reason why I went inside because I, I mean, I wanted to show people what was happening in there. Cause yeah. I mean, cause I mean, that, that's a, that's a once in a lifetime, thing to i mean i mean hopefully such storming of the capital doesn't happen again for a while um but it, yeah no i mean i i went inside as a journalist to to document what was happening and uh i mean that, that's all there is to and, and like obviously if i was like encouraging or trying to get more people violent like john sullivan that'd be one thing but like i like i said i have a documented history of just documenting you know something funny? Yeah. So a journalist, when I like to say who from mainstream media outlet, tried to get me, which it never got released because they effed up. And they were like, yo, we have footage of you colluding with the rioters. And I go, send it to me. And it was like me just going, yo, y'all are going to get shot if you go any further. Like, you guys are going to get shot. And I'm like warning them. I'm like, you're like, so you're trying to protect them. I go, um, I'm sorry. Me standing with people <laughs> telling them, please don't go any further. Y'all are going to get shot is not How is that collusion colluding? i am i am there with them and they're trying to push through doors i'm trying to tell them please you're gonna if you go any further we're all gonna get shot is me just going i don't want to die and yeah. that's what i was thinking i was like i was like i think that the capitol police i know people don't like the fact that ashley babbitt was shot and i don't like that either and i think that but i i, I understand why the capitol police would shoot people in fact i thought our federal government had less restraint i thought more people were going to get shot than did I did wow. personally? I thought more people were going to die, and I thought I might get shot. I had a I did, by the way, have a full on, you know, Kev, I had Kevlar vest on, and I had my credentials out. I didn't have uh my my credential my my uh, you know, gas mask and stuff. But like, and they were like, so what do you say about telling people they're going to get shot? I go, let me ask you, if you're in a situation where you are surrounded by people that are erratic and upset and angry, and you think that if they do anything else that your life might be in danger, would you try to de-escalate the situation? You go, yeah, I go. And I fully did because when you talk about it and you think about it, it's like they were pushing in and like, and Taylor Hansen from, from, from Gateway Pun and different people ended up being around people actually getting shot, Ashley Babbitt. Like, and I knew that was possible because I, because when I, when I was in, when I was in one of the staffers offices of Nancy Pelosi, they came in with rifles. And they were like, what are you doing? And I was like sitting there, this guy's like, what are you <laughs> doing? And he like pointed a rifle at us. I was like, yo, I press. And they know, they know that they know that they know Hulu, you know, they know that 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 press credential from the Capitol, the green badge, they know that one. The mm -hmm. one that we have, they know that. So they look at it and they're like, yo, so I was sitting there, and this is not the first time I've had people come at me with rifles and just point them at me. I'm like, yo, 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 relax. And they let me stay. They just didn't, they cleared the office, pulled people out and let me stay. And then I noticed that as I was leaving, they were like locking people in the rotunda and they were trying to close the door so they could arrest, mass arrest people. Yep. Remember that? They were trying to mass arrest people on the inside. And the guy was pushing me like the officer and I showed him, I, I showed him and he pulled me behind police lines. Yeah, so yeah, I, he knew, he knew that I was not part of them. He goes, get back here. And he pulled me out of the rotunda.
Yeah, I, I try to do that, and do you get locked in. Yeah, I got, I got locked. Well, that's what I'm saying. I got locked, and I showed them my my credential, and and so I was like passed along, like through the line. But then I had to get past this one last cop, and he's like, no, like, and he just shoved me back into the crowd. So I, I was so close to getting to the other side, but. Wow. Yeah, they were pushing everyone back. Yeah, they were. And like, but it worked for me because he grabbed me, he pulled me back. And then what happened is I actually, this is like an exclusive. I actually helped <laughs> the police ensure that there was no bombs in the rotunda. So they wouldn't let me leave the original building because they were like, no, you're here. You're part of a crime scene. And I was like, the guy told me, like, you're part of a crime scene. And I was like, okay, well, I'm going to stay. And then, so then I started picking up bags for them because I knew those they weren't bombs. And they were like, we're trying to clear a place of bombs. So I helped the Capitol Police clear the place of bombs. That's a weird thing. You never thought you would do that. I helped Capitol Police clear the place of non-threat bombs. I started picking up bags and opening up backpacks around wow. the ground and, and and helmets and things. And I started showing the police and they were like, this one guy's like, you, sh you shouldn't be doing this. Here's the thing though. A lot of the Capitol Police did know who I was, oh, really? which is very interesting. Huh. And that's how I got out. Hmm. It's because some Capitol Police said, we know who this guy is. You should let him out. <laughs> we watch slightly offensive. No, I'm not going to indict them and say they're, they're uh, conservatives. Just they knew who I was. Maybe they're good police officers and they know who crazy people are. But they knew who I was and was like, this guy's not a threat. We should let him out. So I had a guy who knew who I was, multiple guys, and were like, let this guy out of the building. They let me out. What did you notice after January 6th? Like what happened to both of your social medias? Was there any kind of a censorship or leveling off of following – you know, was there any kind of Take backlash? This one, Julio. Uh, well, I mean, I, I just had a big, uh, I mean, everyone, everyone experienced that like purge in, in followers after uh, when Trump got banned. So, I mean, I, I lost about like 10,000 followers. Damn. Um, but I mean, no, I mean, I'm, I'm slowly getting it back now. Um, n not, nothing, nothing crazy. As, I mean, as far as I know, I don't, I don't think I'm shadow banned. <laughs> I'm for sure shadow banned. I got my Instagram nuked, but I don't know if it was January 6th related or it was because I just posted something like not state approved uh, about the jabs. Uh, I'll never know because they never <laughs> fucking sent me a reason. They the just, jabs. They just deleted the, it. The A. The jabs. Um, Elijah, did anything happen to your social media? <clears throat> yeah, I mean, like, this is really interesting how the social media works. So, like, the night of the Capitol riots. I got an email from Mashable and like BuzzFeed and stuff. I got emails from these journalists, AKA bloggers. And we're like, could you please comment on like losing your Instagram, losing your Facebook? Can you comment on losing monetization on your, on your YouTube? And I had my Instagram, my Facebook, and I didn't lose monetization on my YouTube. I know what they're talking about. And then, um, I woke up the next day and those were all gone. Whoa. So like my Facebook and Instagram were gone. Whoa. Like my personal ones were gone. Like I was deleted offline. So they knew um, that you would get nuked. Yeah. And I, you by did. the way, and like I haven't gained one follower on Twitter since January 6th. Talking about shadow banning, not one. Like I'm, I've am i only lost followers since January 6th. That's wild. Exactly. And I've had nothing but – like I started my, my – like my – Twitter and working on it in 2018, and I'm like at 280,000. And since this year, I haven't gained a follower. So, talk about that. And YouTube, too. I mean, like they sent us an email. And it's funny, the journalists knew about my bannings before it happened. So, what we did is we were smart and we had lawyers contact Facebook and Instagram and be like, oh, cool. So, since you banned Elijah Schaefer, are you banning the New York Times? Because we have the same level of press credentials for the Capitol. And they were there, too. So, it was AP. Are you banning AP? In like four hours, my accounts were reinstated. Wow. It was like a legal letter of like, oh, cool. We're ready for you to ban the AP News, Associated Press. Ready for you to ban BBC. Ready for you to ban Julio. Like, it wasn't like we're not trying to get anyone banned. It was just like, cool. Why don't you ban everyone else? And they realized they were stupid and they had a legal matter. And we're going to take them, we're going to take them up to the highest courts. And, you know, the FBI and the Homeland Security, you know, interrogated all my neighbors. We came here. They tried wow. to accuse neighbors of having hidden knowledge. And my neighbor downstairs was was yelling at them, went, got a lawyer, everything. They went to my the front office at my unit here and, and got my rental records, my financial records. They got my Bank of America records, Damn. Facebook messages. They got my iMessages, my Twitter messages. They got in access to all my social accounts. The FBI did. Uh, they went into everything. They subpoenaed my electronics. It's, it's insane. Um, all of the hands of Eric Swalwell, who shit on live TV. And and wow, yeah, he should. You he mean I, are you talking about a shart? 
Representative or, Eric Swalwell pooped in his pants and he's okay. bitter at the world because of it. Wow. Man, we've all had that Chipotle. That is embarrassing. We've all had yeah. Chipotle. That's definitely that. Relax. I mean, it's a shard or a fart. Sometimes you can't. It's a game time decision. No, but know? like for a lot of people that are not very political, like watching this is like, it's like, it's not political. It's like, it's like you go from doing your job and they come after you. It's so like, I had to go into hiding real, realistically. I went to hiding. We spent a lot of money, which I won't explain it here, but it was what a network could afford and not what a person could. And we, this turned into a civil rights dispute with the Department of Justice, all for just because my politics are wrong. And yeah, people said my tweets, the wording wasn't good. Fine. Okay, I don't like I, you're a fat, ugly bitch. So, okay, cool. I don't like your weight, but I can't arrest you for it. That's fine. You don't like my wording, can't arrest me for it. And it turned into a fact of like they're using January 6th as like a Charlottesville 2.0. They're over exaggerating what happened, even though it was crazy. I admit, I'm like, yeah, it was freaking crazy. It was pretty chill on the outside. No, no but no, no, no. But I saw it. Was, I said, no, I'll meet you. But like, it wasn't the only crazy thing I've seen in the last 12 months. It's one of like a dozen similar things. Yeah. So it was crazy. Was but insane. yeah, yeah, it was insane. But also, like, it's not the only thing. Like, stop pretending like 2020 didn't happen. Like, mm-hmm. you're, you're pretending like the January 6th, it's like, okay, yeah, January 6th riots, crazy. People, crazy, an insane day. But, like, what about, like, June through December of 2020? Yeah. That was two. But we're, we're never going to remember that because all we're going to remember from this era was the Capitol riots. And why did the Capitol riots happen? Because people thought that you could get, get away with rioting. Yeah. People thought there was no consequences. Yeah, and Well, I mean, to a point, like, there is. There is no – I mean, you look at the Portland cases that have been dropped, like, over 50%. There's no consequence. Minnesota too. Yeah, Minnesota. Yeah. Chicago. I look at Chicago, New York, without bail. I mean, these people are getting away with it. So when you're like, well, why can't I get away with it? Well, if you're a Republican, you can't. I'm not excusing the Capitol riots. I'm just saying that I get why people did it because they thought, well, this is normal behavior. Right. And we can get away with it. When but you're upset and you feel cheated, you should you just come riot. out. And yeah. it worked for the left, but the government only prosecutes the right. On a fair basis. Not only. I mean, there are some left people being prosecuted. But, I mean, like, if you look at the amount of cases being dropped for rioting charges on the West Coast. It's insane. L.A., too, with the new with the new DA. They just drop it. Louisville, too, drop, drop the charges. But you pull a gun out to protect your property. That's what I think we're most mad about. That's what we're most upset about is not that, like, it's like, okay, fine. Prosecute rioters yeah. of all types. Prosecute all the rioters. But when you put people without bail for like quote unquote touring the Capitol during a riot, it's like people throw you know Molotov cocktails and get out with a with a fine, you know, five hundred dollar yeah. fine, get out with nothing, and that's what frustrates people is seeing the unequal distribution of justice, seeing that justice is not blind, justice just hates one side, and you realize our intelligence communities are not working for the American people; they're working for a party. I think that's what pisses people off. Absolutely. And you both have uh, covered a lot of these riots and protests and like been, I know Elijah, you've been physically assaulted, really injured. A lot of times. Um, Julia, I don't know if you've ever been physically hurt from covering. Just emotional trauma. He's like, do I just cry just, myself to just sleep? Just inside. <laughs> um, oh, here we go. Oh, oh my God. Are we, thank God someone's taking their shirt off. Oh my gosh. Oh my God. What is that? That is courtesy of the Minnesota State Police. What is that? So it was the beginning of everything in Minneapolis. I thought you were gonna take your whole shirt off. I no, got no. very excited, Julio. <laughs> Jesus, what a tease! No one takes a shirt off. I'm like, was that little... was that an impact munition? Yeah, it was, it was a rubber bullet. The the forty the forty mic mic. So oh, the big cans, the ones that have the, well, they look at those bombs from Mario that come across the screen. Wait, what is that? What happened there? So, so that was so that was uh, May 29th. That was that Friday. It was the night after the third precinct got burned down because that was Thursday. Um, and so during the day uh, when they took back the area, they put a whole perimeter around kind of that uh, block to prevent people from trying to destroy the third precinct any further. Uh, they rolled out the 8 p.m. curfew the first time that night. And so 10 minutes before the curfew, they got over the loudspeaker and said, hey, it's going to be curfew. If you don't leave, you don't disperse because, you know, a crowd had been gathering at different points uh, throughout the day. They said, there's going to be a violation of the curfew. You could be arrested. And, th- and that just set them off. Like, And so they started to attack 
the, uh, the, the police and the national guard. And so, uh, they started the, the national guard and, uh, law enforcement started to pull back from the area and me trying to be smart about it because uh, they, they were both in the street, the rioters and, and the cops. And so I was like, okay, well, I don't want to get shot with what they're, with what they're throwing at. And so I'm going to go on the sidewalk and I'll be off to the side and I'll film from there. Well, so I was literally by myself. <laughs> and, and then I, I was getting video and I, I had just turned, I just like panned over to the rioters and, you know, they're throwing shit. And then all of a sudden I just get, I just get direct uh, hit, hit from a, from that rubber bullet. And it happened so fast. And I mean, the wind got knocked out of me and I, it was, it was very, very, very painful. And so, wow. um, it, it, so that, that mark or that scar is because it, it just took that chunk of skin off. That's a scar. Yeah. And that's, and, and that's a year old, almost a year old now at this point, because it's May. Yeah. You can't, you Ooh. can't, you can't, those scars, like even like Richie and stuff has holes. And like, when you look at people, like the amount of like, like you were saying, the amount of like holes and scars I have in my body and you do too, I'm sure in Richie, like there's like full gashes here where you just like, you can't get it back. Even like, watch, this is kind of weird, but like feel this, watch, just take, put your fingers in. In your mouth? Yeah, watch, feel that? <laughs> do you feel that? It feels a little... I mean, like, I'm holding your whole lip. No, look at that. It feels like a little hard. Well, that one. I think. Yeah. I my whole hand is in your mouth. It's gonna be that I'm kind. Of, is sure. that is that kind no, of video? No, it's this. So like, see this? How it's like. Yeah. Like. <laughs> okay. Like, see that? Yeah, it's like it's all scar tissue. So there's no right. feeling. I have no feeling That's here. That's where you got. Is it? We got punched. Well, I have in no mouth. feeling here. There's no. It's like see how it even like hangs down a little bit lower than the rest of my lip. Watch. Like a tiny, tiny bit. Yeah, but like there's it's there's no feeling. So okay, like so you can't feel that. No, whole this side whole of your this face. is numb. This whole side here. There's no. They ripped it open, and it's like there's Damn. no. There's no. For, is that like, when you got punched in the face? Yeah, but I'm saying even here. So I have like shin problems because like they split open, broke my leg. This shit Who happens. Did? Who did? D DHS in Portland, but like. My doctor told me when I came back, he was like, "Bro, you have an infection." I almost got like, almost got like, like minute, like meningococcal in my leg, like up up to my spine because it got because it split open, and it got it got infected <laughs> in the spine. But like when you start feeling and you go, "Oh my gosh!" Like this stuff, like even like my doctor told me like when you have the MRI, when I got like they cracked up my skull so hard, Antifa wow. did when they, with brass knuckles just split open the back of my head in like January. That was January of 2020. Oh shit, that was a while ago, but. January 2020, they split up in the back of my school. Just, just cracked it open. I couldn't grow hair for a while. They split open Jesus. and you can feel like a bump. It's like these. a lot of people aren't so lucky. And a lot of people died in the 2020 protests. A lot of people died in January 6th, Trump supporters. Like this stuff is deadly. It has a cost, but it's not just the – I want to talk about this. It's not just the human cost of life. The trauma – like I want to give a huge respect to troops, to first responders – like, I don't want to compare these stories to you. Like, you being in war, you you going through PTSD, like, yeah. no means is this an equivalency of, like, what we're talking about here. And so, actually, I have more sympathy for you because I get why so many veterans kill themselves. And don't quote this out, but I'd probably kill myself, too, if I was a veteran in hard situations because I get the fact that, like, the trauma doesn't make sense. It's hard to relate. And it's hard to get back in normal normalcy. Like, it's hard to get back into the real world. If it's hard for us, I imagine for you, it's 10 times as hard. We probably like pussies to you. Mm -hmm. So that's fine. You are what you eat. So I'm proud of pussy. But okay. also, but also, it's like it's like when you get into this, when you get into this, it's like these these situations, like you go, Oh, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. But then you go, Why did why do I drink more than I ever did? Why do I, you know, why do I do things I wouldn't do? Why is it that I need to take shots to un un unwind when I didn't before? And you start looking back and you go, hmm. wow, this stuff really affected me. Yeah. Why is it that I have nightmares when I didn't before? Why is it that I can't yeah. relate to normal people? And you start to realize that like, I'll just be sitting there. My ears go, and start ringing all the time now. And it's not, it's like clench and I have TMJ. It's because there's so many flashbangs and things that have been popped in my ear that my ears just randomly like like spurts. My eyes randomly flash. There's things where it's like I have a huge respect for our veteran community, our first responders. Like my heart's with you because I don't think I'm like you. I just know I've been in so many situations where there's been so much impact, munitions and things to my body, to people, you know, deterrence. It's like, oh my gosh, we were not made to live like this. And it has a toll. It takes a toll. I'm sure you know, Julia, it takes a toll. 
Yeah, no, uh, yeah, I, I get nightmares. Um, and uh, one of the more recent examples was after Brooklyn Center in Minnesota. I uh, there was a, there was a drive by where there was like multiple gun. Like, it was like I think it was like close to 50, 60 rounds that were popped off in like a minute and a half. Um, and so I I came back and I was out on my balcony with my roommate and you know we were just working. And there was a car because, you know, there's a road that's right there and a, a car backfired twice. And so the first time it like backfired and I immediately like just tensed up and like I like went to go like get out of the chair and die for cover. And then I thought, wait, no, this mm-hmm. is a car backfiring. And so I'm like, all right, like I'm good. And then it backfired again. And even though I knew it was a car and not a gun, I still like had that reaction to like, find hard cover because you know, it was exposed and everything, but it, it, it definitely does. And, and I, I definitely get with what you're saying with when, cause you know, I, I just completed my time in the Marine Corps reserves and never deployed, never, never did anything um, worthwhile in there. And so uh, when the, the cumulative stress of everything started to like really hit me in like October of, of 2020, I was like, I was kind of like in denial about it because, and you know, we were talking about this last night where, you know, I, I, I understand how much worse things can be. And, you know, I hear from like my friends who have actually deployed to the Middle East and Iraq and <laughs> Afghanistan, and we're talking like Green Berets and like, mm-hmm. you know, like, so, um, you know, they've been in some, like, sh- they've been in the shit. And so, and then, and then I look at what I went through, uh, and you know, I was I always slept in a bed, you know, at, at a hotel. I mean, sure it was late and it was long, but you don't uh, always sleep. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, I always slept in the bed. I I was never away from home for more than a week. Um, yeah, and so it's just I, I I was just like, why why am I feeling this way when I know things could be worse? And and then of course you know you're not supposed to compare experiences to other people because we all react differently to different types of situations and so i'm still very much in the process of like just even accepting that like yes it's okay for me to like have nightmares and like have you know the, these these reactions to because you know they are stressful situations right i mean that's they, 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 they're, that, like, they're intense there's a difference yeah. between having rock propelled grenades with some people hunting you down so like what yeah. people don't get is this is like when you see online there's like 30 people trying to hunt you down by name, so like, oh, Elijah yeah. Schaefer, Elijah Schaefer, I'm trying here's to find this person. Yep. Like, yeah. here's who he is. Try to find him, and you're in this place, and the police don't have your back. Nope. They're trying to assassinate you, and the FBI has to get involved. Like, like people don't realize to the extent this happens, where like, I've been pulled out by the FBI from situations. Like, I've had federal agents know who I was, contact me and say, we need, we need you out. I've been banned from cities. I'm banned from Rochester, banned from D.C. For, Rochester for sucks, time. man. You're not missing anything. Yeah, but, like, but what I meant is like, I've been banned. What the banned. hell is Rochester? <laughs> what I meant is that it's not the same thing. And I don't want to, equ- equ- uh, you know, false equivalency. But also, yeah. like, you know, the, it's it's not like, oh, yeah, I have indiscriminate firing from, you know, El Hubar al Jagabi from, like, from, like, freaking, you know, Kuwait or something. You know, but, like, it's like. <laughs> it's like it's just it's, the name, just the name. Yeah, but it's like it's like it's like you had someone hunting you down. So it's like when they know like, oh, Julio Rosas is here, they're coming after Julio Rosas, who's a right wing operative, even though he's just a truthful journalist that has nothing to do with that. But it's like he's an American loving, military serving American who just loves the country and he's not even worried about right wing or left wing, he's just serving the truth. And they're gonna hunt you down. That's what that's what's scary about it. It's like you're not just a journalist that might get caught in the crosshairs of getting shot by a random gun. People are hunting you, right? I'm sure you've experienced that. People are looking for you, oh, yeah. and you've had people post online. Wow. They're trying to find you while you're at an event working to make sure you're murdered. Yeah, wow. or at the very least, like yeah. I mean, because I mean, they they don't say explicitly because like they they can be like held liable if something does happen. But like uh, when I was in Louisville uh, for the Breonna Taylor uh, grand jury decision. Good job, by the way. <laughs> Thanks. The, uh, the there was a, a guy named Chad Loader who who yeah, yeah I hate that guy. Uh, but he yeah he's like if, he sent out like he called me a fascist propagandist and all this other nonsense. Uh, but then he said but then he ended the tweet with if you see him confront him which Jeez. is which is like code for you know you know you know do give something. him a wedgie yeah or like, worse yeah do you know do something right and so like 
and, and you know you try to ignore it and you, you don't want to give it too much oxygen because like, you know half the time they are, people are just like um you know talking big online but there is that other half where they're they're, they're serious and and so it's it's unfortunate that that people have you know react that way but i mean it's not gonna stop me from doing my job that's why you're better than me but like kind of conclusion on that is because your show has to go for an hour huh well yeah i had other questions but i like that we, i like that we talked go. a lot about this do them um well i was gonna ask both of you i mean like you keep getting physical like you would cover all these protests and riots. You get physically hurt. Uh, what makes you keep going back? Like, what do you what do you like or Be love honest. about Be covering honest, these events? Up front, isn't that isn't it? Wait, isn't that you're wait, just telling us this is not wrong? Besides the politics and the truth, we're men and we are built for this kind of shit. And like, like, like realistically speaking, is like we're gonna do what it takes to to do something epic and to like show the truth and to fight for what's right. Like I think partly is that that's why men thrive in this type of like journalistic reporting. It's like, I think God designed us as like to be men who want to fight and show and be in these situations and risk our life to show the world what's going on. Like, and not just like your personal reasons. I think we, there's a, a biological spiritual reason that God made men to go out there. To something about having a penis that makes you. No, I think God made them. men. <laughs> so hard dicks, hard hearts, but like, no, but, <laughs> But like, but I think, I that's think, like a tattoo. That's a tramp stamp. I want to say that God made us to like want to be in these situations. Our personal desires are different, but like I've never met somebody in this industry that doesn't love what they do. Yeah, no, I, 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 re I really do, and it, it's, it's, it's kind of weird because the natural inclination, and I understand why like people don't want to go to these things, and I, I totally get that and respect that, but. It, it it's just I mean like it's just, you're just on such a high when mm. like things are just things are just out of control and you're there and you're documenting it and it's just it's it's a lot of fun and you go through like this roller coaster of emotions and even 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 like with the Rittenhouse shooting which I saw the second half of or any of the other shootings that have happened you know close by I mean like even like with that like yeah I was scared. Um, in those instances, because uh, I I don't know where you know there's just so much happening, but um, but there's also just that excitement that you can't replicate, and un, un, until you go to the next ride where something like that happens, and so it becomes addicting, and you know I don't know I it's better I, than sex I, <laughs> it is. I, I I mean I don't know what it says about me where you know I I I want to go because like I I because like obviously like there's that job aspect and like that's the main reason why I, do. I mean I I'm paid to do it so that's why I like but there is that there's that other reason um where it's just it's just it's just fun to be there it's fun but it's better than sex like I even said this like I used to be more into sex before not 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 into it but like right over like, sex <laughs> no but like but like because like people get into promiscuity and they're like oh this and that and butt plugs and weird things but it's like What's better than a butt plug? How about tear gas? That's cool. True. That is going to hurt way more than a butt plug. Yeah, a like flash, what's better, a anal flash bang? or a fucking tear gas? What do you want? What do you want? Tear a, gas. A gangbang or a flashbang? I'll tell you that. That's my point. So it's like, it's like you try They both this. hurt. It's like, you know, it just depends on your gag. One you flex, forget the, next, the one you forget the next day, the next, the other one stays with you for life. And I'll tell you what it is. But it's like, yeah, like I, I think that too, it's like, it's what brings you back is that. There's no drug. There's nothing that can bring you in that moment of what it is where your life is on the line. Your safety is on the line. You end up with scars, with issues. Your life could be lost. People do die. And you realize you're in, not in a simulation. You're in the real world. And there's nobody protecting you but God himself. There's nobody out in the world. Nobody. Your friends can't save you. You can't save you. Half the time we're in Democrat cities. Yeah, I can carry a gun here. You can't carry a gun in D.C. Can't carry a gun in, in, in half these places, New York. So the places where you need a gun, you can't. Yeah. And we interject ourselves into the most deadly situations. And we do it because we love it. We love it. And even now, the reason why I, like, I was in, in Brooklyn Center, it said it hurt me. The reason why I'm not out now is because I work for a network. And it's freaking difficult because – I the money maker. You can't lose the money maker. Yes. So it's like I make the network a lot of money. That's just true. I do make them a lot. I do. I make them more money than probably 50 people watching the show watches. I make them a lot of money. So they don't want to lose me. 
But it's like, uh, but why do I want to go back? They always ask me that, bro, you have money, you have mm-hmm. success. Why do you want to go back out? You go, it's not about the money. It's not about the success. It's about just doing what matters. And you know, and you know that when you get that footage out there, the, the, the minds it changes, the, mm-hmm. the, the people that Sharing take it sway, the way that it, it fills in the gaps, it doesn't guarantee that the world will go the way you want it, but it does unfortunately put a, a, a freaking – piece of wood in um i use a good word for your podcast but a piece of wood <laughs> in the cog to stop the weirdness of the world from the brainwashing turning. yes yeah. it's like look i'm not editing this these people are doing this and when yeah. when his footage comes out and he says here's what happened to brooklyn center and then a juror on the on the george floyd case says i live in brooklyn center and i'm these riots affected me his footage is what changes my mind as an american citizen and that's why we do wow. it ultimately. It's not just the fun, the thrill. It's yeah. seeing the real world impact. When Harvard researchers are trying to say that that riot reporters are hurting the country, you know we're doing something right. Because because hurting, you're just showing what's yeah. happening. Yeah. Well, fuck be, yeah, yeah, well, yeah, fuck Harvard. Sorry. Uh, yeah, Sorry, no, I thought it was a fuck Harvard. It was a fuck Harvard. <laughs> no, no, and 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 yeah. So it, it's it's a two, it's like a multifaceted motivation for it like there, there's the fun aspect but it's also just important i mean when we look at riots in, in in the past i mean the reason why we know about the rooftop koreans from the los angeles riot 92 is because journalists documented that and and so like that there's just so many there's just so many things that happen there in these situations where if you don't capture it, it's going to be lost to history be, because it, there's just 10 other things that that we're talking about it. And so the, the more, the more eyes on it, the better. And so it, it, it look, yeah. And it feels good to when, when you have, uh, you know, your footage being used widely and because that that's the reason why, because you want to show people what was happening and then using Twitter, you're able to do it in real time. And so that's, that's like a pretty cool aspect of it. It's like, yeah. do you feel a certain duty to just, show people the truth and yes yes but like but like but to cut that off just saying like what happens is like i think what people don't get is that so like i can make podcasts and you make a podcast this is a podcast you can get your 50 100 000 views these are much different views than footage from twitter so like you know we're you know you get people to buy your products you get people to be on board they're like you they're like oh chris you take off your top Julio, okay. No. <laughs> Julio, show us that scar again. Let me, let me finger myself to it. Whatever. <laughs> but, but, but on, <laughs> as I mean, Julio are different. I'm like, I'm like, I'm a strap of TV host. But on a side <laughs> note, is like, is like, this is a different model. And with what happens with journalism is like journalism is so stupid that the people like Julio, people like Jorge Ventura, people like Richie, etc. Except, you know that like. That's why you realize the media is lying to us. Because you go, dude, I just have to put a little bit of extra effort, like 20%, yeah. to show you what's really happening. And then yeah. you see the media and you go, the media comes to Julio, not Town Hall. It's Fox. It's CNN. It's everyone going, Julio, can we buy your footage? If they're going, you're the one showing the truth. And unfortunately for us, we have to go with you. Wow. Shame on the media for asking Julio to buy his footage. But it's – truthful because julio's a wise guy so you have to buy his footage because how are you going to get his footage how are you going to indict people without julio's footage how are you going to use this kind of stuff so it's like it's like i think when you realize it's like which we've talked about i'm a reporter by accident and that was the the, tr- the ultimate you troll. fell into it, it you was were a, troll. a protest troll. Well, it was a troll yes it was a troll on the media and i'll admit that here i trolled the media i became a reporter got second highest clearance for for besides white house clearance got multiple interviews opportunities around high profile people it was around Donald Trump everybody I, I've been around Bernie Sanders I've been in Bernie Sanders van I've Ooh. been with Kamala Harris I've walked with Kamala Harris and talked to her like arm in arm talking to her based on the fact that the media is such a joke that there's not respected anymore that the real respectful people are being called trolls and that's what I want to talk about is that media is dead but there are people keeping it alive and they're being ostracized. And Julio Rosas, if you want to follow him, uh, townhall.com, but also follow him all on social media in the in the in the description below. He's a wise guy and he's the real deal. And people like me And you, a huge cock, if I might say. You saw it. <laughs> I gave a lick. I went, 
<laughs> anyway, he's a shame. I mean, we're not. We're, we're, yeah. We've accepted who we are. He's like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's like, no, I have want to get married. No, but on the real note. <laughs> On the joke, but off off the jokes it's for Julio's sake. Right, no, no, no. Right, right. But I meant, also, yeah. I do it's, like, it's like it's like it's huge but, integrity. Yeah, yeah. He's got a massive integrity. It's so thick, thick, wide. It's just, just. Yeah, it smells great. It's clean. Wow, I was too drunk. <laughs> uh, but on the real note, it's like saying like that's why we really do it is because that's a hamster. Oh yeah, there's a hamster in a wheel that's running around. Can I bring one? Yes, please go get us. <laughs> Wait, where? where okay. He was silent the whole episode. Yeah. This yeah, Gus, sure. Gus is in a wheel. He's been in the wheel like this whole episode, being good. And now, yeah, it's a, it's Gus. No. I know he's such a cutie. Gus, we thought was dead. I mean, I was, I've been staying here a couple days, and it was like, don't look in Gus's thing. He might be dead, but he's clearly alive and well. He's very sweet. Come out of your hole. Oh my God! Get out! Come on! Oh my God! Dumbass! <laughs> look at that! It might be full of turds. His wheel, but look at that! Look at Gus! He's such a little cutie. Yeah. So for wasting your time, all I was gonna say is that we do it because it's fun. But also, Julio, I gotta get back out with you soon because now I'm like, I'm like good enough for like I'm not gonna build my company for things. I have to just get back out with you because like. Yeah, man, it's it's it's, it's great. We like, we like to have fun out there, dude. I ripped my kneecap before this with Brooklyn Center, so I had to get reconstructive stuff. Yeah, like oh I, I tore a tendon it full of pus. That's why I had to go to Brooklyn Center. Oh, it was Jesus like bloody Christ. knee. It was gross, and I couldn't go out. This real talk, but I gained like twenty thousand subs and did some like weird fights with conservative people, and it was All kind right. of fun. I guess that's worth it. Yeah, but on the real note, in the end, I know you have a lot of stuff. This is we're already past your time, but. Do you want me to give an outro? Yes, please. For the Chrissy Mirror Podcast, my wow. name is Elijah Schaefer. I'm the host of Slightly Offensive. You can follow me on slightlyoffensive.com. And you can find my content on YouTube, Slightly Offensive. You can find me on Instagram. Guess what it is? Elijah Schaefer. No, slightly Offensive. Slightly Offensive. No, Elijah right. Schaefer is a private Instagram. But more importantly, how can you find Julio? Oh, yeah. Uh, Twitter at... Julio underscore Rosas 11, Instagram, Julio A. Rosas, and you can find me at your mom's house. And any future <laughs> projects you're working on? Wow. Um, so the reason why I'm here, in, uh, by happenstance, I was making my way down to the border, but then the weather in Dallas got screwed everything up. Um, and so I'm, I'm headed down to the border uh, to McAllen, the, the Rio Grande Valley, just because there is a crisis down there. And... There's a lot of people crossing, and and there's there's a lot of stories that need to be told in relation to that. So that's why. Yeah. So that that's the immediate uh, project, as a, as opposed to anything else. I mean, it's just a matter of you know we're kind of in a we're kind of in a lull right now, and so I kind of feel like a, a dog without a car to chase. But you know, I think uh, the, the sad thing is whenever there's a controversial police action, whether justified or not, the the, the natural response is to riot. So. Just by the nature of, of things, there 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 will eventually be something that will cause something. And so yeah, we'll be there. Nice. I like it. Close out your own show. Guys, thank you so much for joining us on the Chrissy Mirror podcast. Man, like you guys basically ran this whole thing. I just had to sit here and play with the hamster. Um, follow Julio, follow Elijah, check him out. Thank you so much for watching the show and we'll see you soon guys. Bye.